everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome to the Stretch Your Supply series. If you haven't seen the intro video, head over there and then come back for the episode number one, altering image stamps. So there's a couple different techniques I wanna show you and first up is masking. And I have a couple techniques under the category of masking. The first one, we're gonna be using this MFT set called Festive Flamingos and we're gonna use the flamingo at the bottom right. Now, I don't want his antlers in this. Now, I know that there's one on the top left that doesn't have antlers and has the ice skates, but I want him to be facing the left. So we're gonna use this one. We're gonna place the stamp in the Misty, pick it up onto the door, and then we're gonna use some washi tape to mask off the antlers. I'm just gonna rip off a little piece, put it on top of the antlers, and then we're going to use some new to me ink, the Simon Hurley Creates dye ink pad in piggyback to ink up this image. Now you wanna be careful of a couple things. One, you wanna make sure that your washi tape is very securely put on there. Two, you wanna make sure you take off the washi tape before you stamp the image down because it has ink on it. And how do I know? I've done that before. So be careful to press your washi tape down good so the ink doesn't seep underneath as well as take it off before you stamp on. Now, once you do this, you're going to have a stamped image without the antlers. So that's the first way to do it. So the second way, we're actually going to alter the stamp. So this little bird here has a Santa hat on, but now it's after Christmas and maybe I just want him to have a winter hat on. So the two stamp sets that I am using are Concord and Ninth's Winter Wear Stamp Set and Honey Bee Stamps Seasons Tweetings. So I'm going to pick out the bird with the Santa hat on, and I'm going to do the same type of thing. I'm going to mask off the Santa hat. Now this is a little bit more complicated because it's not just one little area. We're going to need to mask off the top of the Santa hat, as well as the little pom-pom on the side. Now don't worry, when you do this, a lot of times you might lose lines to the image. I'm going to show you how to fix this. It's very simple, especially if you have a Micron pen or uh, if you have a Copic safe marker or just a black marker. Now, if you're using Copics to color this in, I would make sure that you use a Copic black marker or whatever color you stamp in or a uh, Micron pen. If you're using anything else, a black pen, a black marker, anything like that would be fine. So now you see I have masked off the hat. I broke the washi tape because the hat curves a little bit and the washi tape is a straight line. So you want to make sure that you curve it along so that you're getting the whole entire line. If you don't, don't worry about it. A white gel pen will be your best friend. It can make up for a lot of the um, accidents if you get some ink on there. And again, you want to make sure that's secured down nice and uh, pressed down there on there nice. And then I'm using MFT's Extreme Black Hybrid Ink, which I finally got a re-inker for, so I'm excited I can use this, uh, this ink pad again. Now I'm pulling off the washi tape. Again, that's super important before you stamp down. Make sure you tear off that washi tape. Putting it down, and then you're going to notice that it's not a fully stamped image. You're going to see that part of his what would be his left wing, because we're looking at it, did not stamp. Don't worry, we'll fix that in the end. And there is a little bit of a line above his, what would be his left eye. Uh, don't worry about that because we're actually going to cover that with the stamp. Now I'm going to pull out one of the hat stamps from the Concord and Ninth Winter Wear stamp set and place it on top of his head. I'm going to strategically place it so that it will cover up that little bit of a line that I somehow missed when we stamped. Now, if you're going for a totally different look, if you were going to just take the hat off totally and draw a line, you can make sure the line goes around him or you can use a white gel pen and uh, get rid of that. Or a sander, the sand erasers, that can also take it off. So here we go, just inked up this stamp very easy to do, and now he looks like a complete image. You would never ever know that that is not how the image was intended, with the exception of the fact that he still doesn't have a wing right now. But now you see me take a Micron 05 pen and I just draw it in. If you're too afraid to draw it in, sketch it out with a pencil very, very lightly, just so that you have kind of an idea of how to make that arc, and then you can use your Micron pen to go over it. So that's it. Never know that that was not a full image to begin with. It didn't look just like that 
you know, when you bought the stamps. So that is a couple of masking techniques. Now I'm going to show you one or two, actually two more. This is a scarf from the Winter Wear stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it out because I just want the part that goes around the neck, not the pieces that hang down. So this is another way that you can alter the images. You can fussy cut them out and cut pieces off. So you're going to see, I'm going to also mask this off. So actually this one is not going to be the fussy cut. We're going to do the fussy cut in a minute. I got ahead of myself. We are just going to stamp out the top part of the scarf, just like it's one of the ones that wraps around your neck, like the infinity scarfs. So again, we are just going to take the washi tape, mask off the part that we don't use. Just make sure that you start your ink pad close to where the washi tape is. You don't wanna get any ink on the bottom that's unmasked. If you think you might, you can go ahead and mask off that section with some more washi tape, but I've just done this a lot and I know that I don't have to do it if I keep my ink pad towards the top of the image. You can see I'm using that same MFT Extreme Black ink again to ink it up and you're gonna stamp it down. The only other thing to make sure of is that your stamp is nice and clean because if it's not, if the bottom part of your stamp is not cleaned, you may get a little bit of like a halo residue uh, if there's ink on the bottom of it. So just make sure your stamps are cleaned off nice. Now I know that my stamps look dirty, but they're not, they're just well loved. <laughs> so you stamp that down and there you go. It's just the infinity part and now of course, where the masking tape was or the uh, washi tape was, there was a little bit of a misline, so I just took my micron pen and went back in with it. Simple, very easy to do, and now you have a scarf that you could put around another animal. The last masking thing that we are going to do is kind of more of like a fussy cutting. It's not really masking, but I included it in here just so that you guys could see. This is going to be taking the tassels off the bottom or the little fringe and kind of making it in two pieces because what you could do is pop with some like low uh, pop dots. You could put the, uh, pop up the top part of the scarf and then leave the bottom part on, you know, a glue that down right to the image. So it kind of gives it a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to cut out the scarf in two pieces. I'm gonna cut out what we stamped before, like kind of like the infinity scarf. And I'm just going to cut that out. Now you may only need the bottom part of your scarf like this, and maybe you want it over the jacket. So you can do something like this, which is kind of altering the image after you stamped it. So it's, more, it's fussy cutting, but I think it still falls under there. So if you guys don't, let me know in the comments, but I just thought I would throw in another technique because I was having so much fun coming up with techniques for this whole entire thing. And we're just on the very first idea of masking, guys. So we still have a lot more to come. So you can see it doesn't exactly fit great on that image, but I was just showing you what it would look like. And then here I will put the bottom on and after I fussy cut it, and again, you can get some of the low profile pop dots and put that on there um, or kind of glue it together to make it look like it, even just putting a little bit of dimension on it will, will help it stand out from the bottom image. So there you go. And you can also paper piece with that, which we'll do a video on that because that's another way to uh, stretch your supplies is paper piecing. Okay, so that's it for masking. So now here's my favorite technique, the mixing and matching. I had to make a card for a 97-year-old woman who was part of the Navy. And in this Kindred Stamps stamp set, they had a naval man, but not a naval woman. They had an Air Force woman. So I combined the stamps. So you see, I stamped out both images, colored in the head of the woman from the Air Force and colored in the body of the man. And we are actually going to put together a complete image from these two images. It was so much fun. So I fussy cut those out off camera and I'm sorry about the bad lighting. But here I'm going to show you what helps to make it seamless. I took a black marker, just a random one that I had lying around, and went around all of the edges of the image. It helps it give a finalized look. It looks like you didn't really fussy cut it. It gives it that black border around all the edges. So that's what I'm going to do. Go around the hat, the body of the naval sailor, and the head of the Air Force person. Now I apologize because it does look really funny to have this image headless and then have a head laying there, but I promise you in the end it looks 
100% completely seamless. Again, you will never ever know that this was not an image that was in that stamp set to begin with. Look at how perfectly that comes together. This will happen in a lot of stamp sets where you can mix and match things. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to pick a stamp set and to pick and choose parts of an image that you want on there. So that is the image. And then I'm gonna show you how I put it on the card. I did a background. Uh, since this is for the navy, I used a, I believe this was Concord and Ninth Midnight Ink with one of the Concord and Ninth uh, background stamps. I think it was the stitched background stamp. And I'm gluing the body on. And again, I know, I'm sorry, it looks really, really weird, but it will look great when it's all together. So I'm using MFT On Point Precision Glue, which ran out, and then I used my Honey Bee Glue to finish gluing the um, head to the body, <laughs> which I know, I'm sorry. It, just, it looked funny to me when I was doing it, but I was so, so happy with the way it came out. This is one of the first times I've ever done this technique, and I just thought it was so cool because it looks like there was a naval woman in there, and there's not. So I loved it because she had the little bun and that's actually, I looked up images and a lot of them, that's exactly how they wear their hair in the Navy, in the pictures that I saw. So that's it. And then I'm going to show you the images again. There's the Naval Sailor and the uh, Air Force woman. And look, you can't even tell that that wasn't supposed to be part of that set. Absolutely my favorite technique. Okay, so the next one, this is, we're going to use the same stamp to do a bunch of different techniques. So the stamp set that we're going to use is Concord and Ninth's Birthday Balloon and that sketched background stamp from Concord and Ninth. I'm going to ink up the large balloon from the Birthday Balloon stamp set in Oceanside from Concord and Ninth. And then we're gonna take that background stamp and you can use any background stamp, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it has a pattern to it and pick up that color off of there. Now I was a little bit too forceful and this one didn't come out really well. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I didn't pull off enough of that color. So we're actually going to go in and do it again the other way and it looks really cool. It almost looks like an earth, or it looks like an earth, it looks like earth when you do it. So I didn't get a great coverage on this. Sometimes this, um, Technique is hard because you have to use a very solid stamp for that. I mean, that's cool. That's a cool enough background. But then what I decided to do was use some Concord and Ninth Midnight Ink, ink it up with the Midnight Ink, and then make the background stamp go the other way. So you're actually going to see that ocean side through the midnight where we pick it up. So this is the first time I've done this. So this time I didn't press as hard because I think that I did that and I actually picked up some of the uh, ink from in between. So you can see I didn't put it on a uh, background stamp or anything. And you can see there's areas where I had little air bubbles. So you're gonna see the green through it. But this looks completely different compared to the the circle balloon that you saw in the beginning. So I think that technique looked really cool. So the next one is embossing folders and we're going to do the same type of thing. We are going to use that stamp set and ink it up and take a pull from it. Now this is almost like the jelly presses. That's kind of what I liken the all these techniques to. So this is a embossing folder from when I got my Gemini. So I just used, this one's a 3D embossing folder. So this one picked up a little bit better than some of the other embossing folders. I tried with like a Swiss dot one before and the dots were really, really tiny. It comes out better with a pattern like this rather than just little dots. You can also do the same thing um, with like taking a roller ball or something like that and creating a design in there and taking the ink off of it. So again, it's just like a jelly plate. You could use um, those little popping bubbles that you get. There's a ton of different things you can use. So we're gonna now do this technique with a die. And this one is from Concord and Ninth. It's one of the, I believe, winter Prisma plates that we're going to use. There was, it's a layering one. And this one had a really, really cool pattern on it. So what I did was I laid it down and then I took a paper towel and did this over top of it. However, I managed to kind of get the paper towel down into some of the areas, so I pulled off a little bit more ink than I wanted to. Again, these are not 
perfect techniques, but it's something that can add a little bit of texture to your stamps and it's a good way to alter them, especially if you have plain boring stamps like this big circle and you're trying to figure out something neat to do with them. So these are these give just like there you go you can see the um, the dots off of that. So just some additional ideas if you guys are you know interested in these ones. And then I did the same thing the finalized one with a stencil and this one is from Sassy and Crafty and I'll have them all linked below. Did the exact same thing, inked it up in the ocean side, put the stencil down, but then I did not use a paper towel on this one. I just kind of used my fingers and you can see where the ink is pooling underneath. So I just kind of put my fingers down. I started to use a towel and then I think I decided, I think I do give up in a little bit or maybe I just used like the corner of it. I didn't press it down like I did on the other one to just pull it up so you can see the circle underneath of that you can tell where you still need to press down a little bit to get that ink to pull up off of it so again nothing really different than the other techniques just had to clean that off um, which was really really simple and then there's a design left on the back of this one so i hope that you guys liked these tips and tricks for the very first installment of this stretch your supply series i do have a lot of great ideas i got a couple great more today uh, i did say so i'm super excited about doing videos on them and showing them to you guys so thank you guys so much for watching this first installment and i will see you again real soon for another video bye